Green's all there in the Halloween world. And I went frozen. Jacob Blueson, too. Please excuse the voice. I'm not doing quite well at the moment. I know. But believe me, he's a workaholic as much as I am. Tonight's review will be a special review for Halloween for 31st. So the review will be Scooby Doo and the Boo Brothers. This it's actually Scooby Doo and the Boo Brothers. Thanks, honey. <coughs> we'll see some paranormal, some gorillas, and some slinging gun guys. Ugh. And gun girls, mostly. It starts at the very beginning when the three are sleeping, but they sat, but they've been woken by an evil witch like ghost, as they say. My papa. How scary you, Scooby Doo? And Shaggy, too, before I'm through. That's what I'll do. No, creepy. Even with the sick, even with the sick voice, it's creepy still. <laughs> so yeah, they run out of the house like ah, run right for your lives, and Scrappy so scrappy as ever wants to battle them. And in the end, we got into the cheap, the intro of the Boo Brothers, which I love the command of the animation. It's quite lovely, even back in its heyday. Mm. In any case, we see Saggy and Scooby and Lil Scrappy on the journey to go to the um, house that is owned by his, by his great-grandfather, Colonel... Uncle, actually. Oh, Uncle. Thank you, honey. Uncle. Let's see. His name is oh yeah, it's Uncle Bulbagod. He left the plantation to him in his will. And so Scrappy, I mean Shaggy, is the only relative that's alive around there anyway. But as they were going there, they meet with a sorry fate, the spirits of his uncle Bulbagod and a well, tons of lot of spirits. But let's Jake go have his thoughts on the movie, shall we, honey? Yeah. Next part. Basically, this is one of my favorite Scooby Doo movie. So many like it because of all the witty clips, mostly because of the Boo Bros, who are like across the street of the Stooges and Casper's uncles. Exactly my point. Yeah, it means something. In any case, as they finally got to the plan to the estate, to inherit his gift, he met Sheriff Bubsy, who tells them to warn them about the state is being haunted and they should leave. But Scrappy says, oh no, we're not going to leave. We got to inherit it. Shaggy has the rights to inherit it. And you have no rights to tell him not to. Or something like that. But then, well, he gets all creepy for one second and say, you be warned, Shaggy. Or... Er. Otherwise, you'll meet the sorry fate of ghosts, which is anticipated that later on we'll know why he's like this. Then he received, before he could find, but before he could finally convince them, he received a call from the police chief notifying him that the circus train has been derailed. Circus ape has escaped, leaving Shaggy, Scooby, and Scrappy to continue their driving. Upon Aaron and they pursued, they were followed by the headless horseman and a ghost wolf. And, and of course, ghost b bothered by the ghost himself, Colonel Boyard. Honestly, too many spooks in this movie. Your thoughts, honey? And Shaggy, and Shaggy definitely had a lot of scares on the way. Agreed. This is the arrival of the mansion is the only time you see the wolf. That's true. It doesn't appear any other time. And throughout the rest of the film, making you wonder about the wolf. Yeah, I wonder about that too. I mean, seriously, who is this wolf? Maybe it was a pet of Colonel Bogart? Maybe Colonel Bogart had a wolf like hybrid dog pet like Boto? Never know. In any case, the spirits continue to bother them, but unfortunately, it didn't really, it didn't really, they, they lost them in the mud. And as they drove near to the creepy mansion, they meet the manservant, Farquaad, who's like the, ugh, the son of ugh, Quasimodo, between, between Frollo and the Roger Claus, with the Roger Claus evil laughing. 
He has an evil laugh that sounds like Roger Claus from Doug Funny. Seriously, creepy voice. Who tells them the vast fortune in the jewelry is hidden somewhere in a state and he believes it's all rightfully his. But Shaggy has no business here. Typically, though, Shaggy wants to leave. Before he can do that, his truck gets <coughs> sinked into the <coughs> Bless you, bless you. Gets sink into the mud. Mysteriously, it disappeared. Your thoughts? Well, basically, after they, um, actually, before they try and leave, the aide appears, then the sheriff arrives telling she Egg, in company, anybody on the Cape Circusy, most like we got away during the train wreck that was mentioned on the sheriff's radio earlier. When the truck, well, at least the sheriff can't catch me, saying that it's a ghost. And why that the ape was in a room with Scooby. Scooby knows he's in the scene, he ain't. He jumps down. Then gets into Shaggy's shirt. The little some in pick up the in the way in the pool cartoons. Shaggy asks what's wrong. Scooby tells him there's a monster in the room. Shaggy lets Scooby drop to the phone and asks him what kind of monster. Scooby starts acting like an ink. The sheriff goes to investigate and finds a stuff thing. Then Fog Water explains it's been bone. An ink was no longer among the lip. Uh, the ghostly gorilla story we heard in a movie that explains a lot. Yeah, and it only makes you wonder about the ape they have trouble with throughout the rest of the film. Is it the ghost ape or the one from the circus? Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell, really. Ironically, they look similar or like blue fur and hmm. all. Yeah, it definitely raises a lot of questions. Definitely raises so, a lot yeah, of questions. After the sheriff leaves, Shaggy and Scoop, he finds Scrap, he shows him a ring that fell out of Farquaad's pocket. On the ring is a big Fiona Bobori guard, and on the ends, and on the ring, a message saying, For my nephew Shaggy. Hello, Shaggy. In this Shaggy still doesn't want to stick around with his house of horrors for now five minutes. So, I want her as he walks out, finds his car sinking. He runs out to try and get parked, and Scrappy and Scooby Goat, who's rescuing, one of two times in the film where Scrappy doesn't want Scooby Uncle. True. In the end, well, saying Shaggy, they end up <coughs> came from back onto the porch, said Barkwad flying into the overhanging ceiling. <coughs> Very well put, Jaco. Very well put. So I'm afraid the three, the trio, were forced to stay in the in their uncle in his uncle's old house, which. They couldn't, which Gooby and Shaggy couldn't sleep at night, which Scrappy there too, trying to keep blowing out the candle. <laughs> trying every single time, which is a pain in the butt to try. So in the end, they decided to call in the ghost exterminators. However, in a turn of events, the ghost expectors, exterminators are ghosts, the Boo Brothers. Which, as Jake O'Curley says, that they are like Mo, Curly, and Joe. Basically, they're like a cross between the Three Stooges and Casper's uncle. Oh, yeah. Those bozos. You got Rico. Shrieko <laughs> and Fatso. Oops, sorry. Actually, wrong name. Wrong name, sorry. Rico. So, yeah. You got Rico, the leader of the trio. And the more serious, Shrieko, the skinny one with the pilot hat, who is basically... Basically, has the lack of curly and 
is basically the fun-loving member of the group. And then you have Nico, yep. the fat cavalry member of the group. Oh, yeah. And the one kid. thing you notice with their names, they all have Nico. Yeah, because they have in ego name. in their name. They're full of ego. Get it? Ego? Eco. I know. I'm just trying to make a pun here, honey. Yeah. yeah. In any case, as they began following the trio, the trio ghosts, they used a little tiny little twig ghost to go after the ghosts. Which they had to go following it all over the house until they lost track of them. And then the little ghost thing turns, um, the little ghost turns on the music and they start dancing. And then we meet Shady Ma Shoggins, the child and, of his yeah, relative. Sadie May. Sadie, I'm not very good at saying names. Thank you, honey. Mm -hmm. Sadie asks for, oh, may I have a cup of sugar? And then when she hears the music. She was actually asking for a cup of black strand molasses, whatever that is. It's sugar. And hillbilly talk, honey. Even I know that. Hold on. And then when she sees, oh my god, there's a party! And she comes in and swings her over Shaggy. And those two, woof! Honey, that girl has the hots for that Shaggy fellow. Mm. Honestly. Mm. <laughs> Cute together. I would have loved to ship these two together if they continued on. Sadly, never happened. <laughs> Wish it could happen. And yeah. then, when they finally got out of the house just to get her out of there, then they meet the brother, Billy Bob. And Billy Bob says, why aren't you doing around here, fell city fella? We don't need no city fellas. And then Sadie's like, but Billy, there are new neighbors. They're related to the Beauregard family. Beauregard? Did you say Beauregard? Then we see a lot of Beauregard, a lot of guns out there shooting them everywhere. Boom, 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 boom. It seemed to be that the Beauregard and the Shuggins were rivals. They hated Shuggins. each other. Shruggins, thank you, honey. They were, uh, they had a feud with each other. Oh my god, this this feud was like, yeah. seriously. It's like, oh my god, this thing. Guns, you got each other, oh my god, it was just awful. No, it's like he's related to Colonel, by which means it turned into a romance story. Romeo and Juliet references, because hey, Shady's a Shruggin kid, and Shaggy is Bogart's nephew. Fell in love with him. But Sally, Billy Bob does not want him to do that. Did not want him to do that. So Billy Bob goes shooting Shaggy off. After things calm down a little though, Shaggy, Scooby, Shaggy, I mean Scrappy, decided to go in the kitchen to eat something. However, the only thing they found were three guzzly hungry food, hungry ghosts, and they got all the food. There's nothing left but a cake, which the three messed up with. Your thoughts, hun? Well, let me explain the scene a little better. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a wild one. The little toy ghost was the Boobrow's demonstrator ghost. And during this scene, Shaggy finally sees the ape. Uh, yes, the ape. And I sent you a link about what Blackstrap Molasses is. Thank you, honey. You're full of sweets. So yeah, the relationship of Shaggy and Sadie Mae is basically one-sided. Yeah, but you're in... And the scene went like this. What you all doing trespassing around here, fella? Sadie Mae says, he, he ain't no trespass, or Billy Bob. He's our new neighbor. They're from the boring compilation. Ain't he cute? You know, I was trying... Uh, sorry. Go on. He inherited the place from his uncle. And Billy Bob says, your uncle? You mean your kin folk to the boring guards? Of course, the Scroggins have been few for nine, a hundred. But in 45 years? The Shaggy then starts stabbing people saying, It's nice to meet you. Then Boy Guard whistle. Goes to the rest of the family saying, Hey boys, we got us another Boy Regard. And then you get a bunch of other. They were good. He go like, Boy Guard! Yep. <laughs> and Shaggy said, Swarm back without saying, Like, yeah. Then runs into his uncle's goat. Who's telling him to leave? Also, so Jackie is back into the house when Billy Bob starts shooting at him again. And he's where he's, he said he may actually has some strength to her as she wraps her brother's gun around his neck. And mm -hmm. Billy Bob's saying, Why do you have to go ahead and take that male order muscle course? Maybe she's the daughter of Papa. In any case, molasses is sugar, honey. It's from beet. 
from sugar beets into sugar. So it does make sense. Molasses and sugars are the same, honey. Just to make a little nitpick here. Yeah. Any case, my sweetie's full of information. And as for the food scene, we get a funny cake slinking sling right into the faces of the ghosts. And then, here's the first part of it. They found, found, they found one diamond in the in a heap of ice, ice, you know, ice holder, ice packet, sorry. There's some, ice tray. Thank you, honey. They found one diamond ice tray, and I even have the riddles on here, so I'll read to you each riddle, but not the answer. Dear Shaggy, knowing your appetite, I thought this would be the best place to hide the message in the jewelry. It's only one of many in my fortune, which is hid to keep them away from my enemies. To find the next clue to the hidden place, go outside, then look for the part of the house that with the knee out. Let me see if I can say that a little better. Dear Shaggy, knowing your appetite, I thought this would be the best place to hide this message and this jewel. It is only one of many in my fortune which I hid to keep them away from my enemies. To find the next clue to their hiding place, go outside, then look for the part of the house with its knee out. Honey, you said it better than I would ever say it, but then again, at least I tried. In any case, back to our little, back to our little review. <sighs> in any case, as they went to look, as they went outside to find the next fun, to find the clue to what it means, and the little, the little darling, as in Scrappy, was able to find the first clue. And it was, and it was a. <clears throat> they were able to find it hidden in the chimney. So Shaggy and Scooby climbed up, but there was some trouble with certain with certain twos. Like let's see. Billy Bob and his, and his silly sister. But also when Shaggy got on top of the chimney, there was the skeleton ghost. The skeleton ghost is really creepy. Very, very creepy. I mean, seriously, who is this guy? The grandfather, the headless horseman, or an evil cousin? Oof. So, in any case, they had a huge ride with it. Shaggy had to pull on and pull. Scrappy was trying to get rid of him too. In the end, they got the jewel from him. <coughs> oh, poor honey, John. In any case. Anyways, with this clue finally been found, they found the next message in the clue. The next clue is, you're near the family jewels. From before, a broken key unlocks the next door. And I'll let Jake go talk about this one when he gets back. Anyways. Oh, yeah. Here I am. It's okay, though. So basically, they go outside. They have another encounter with the squad. But they get chased off when the gorilla shows up. Scrappy figures out what the clue means when a break falls from the chimney. Honey, I already explained that part already. Yeah. However, but there's once. However, the blueberries show up. Shriko tries to help them, but they end up falling into a bus. Yep. After Shriko fails to catch an old bonehead, Shriko comes up saying, Ah, oh, it's bad. Hey, did you look in the up? And Fico says, oh, Doc, what's up, Doc? And Fico goes, nothing, what's up with you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that. And Fico goes, yeah, we'll get a kick out of this. Then he grabs Fico and goes up to a ball and kicks him right onto the, onto the sheriff. Like a <laughs> soccer ball. <laughs> Two points for Fico, who then goes back to work. Exactly. Then the sheriff, I mean, then asks the, my sh Eggy. He wants to know what's going on. Shaggy tries to explain, but the sheriff ends up getting a hold of his hat, courtesy of Billy Bob. Then while we'll putting his hat back on, he gets his... Billy Bob shoots his belt and his pants to fall off. He's got his underwear on, which is green with red polka dots. <laughs> then he gets the level call down the red circus ring and heads off. Investigate. Then we have a scene of Billy Bob having trouble with his rifle. He throws a ammunition the game to put the cork back on the dump uh, horn. Then after the fire again, he lights a match. 
to realizes he forgot to take out the safety catch. He drops the mat. General Ward, the powder that's behind him, he gives chase to Shaggy and the dogs. And after he finds him, he realizes late the burning powder that's coming right up to him and bang! The blow up in his face. Which was pretty funny, is all I could say. Yep. <laughs> and the next clue read, You're nearer the family jewels than before. A broken key unlocks the next door. When Shaggy asks, like I whatever that means, the egg crying. He goes, search me. And this starts a little chase to Shaggy's to be in the egg. Yep. Then he leads all the way. As a result, the door getting knocked down. While the ape is busy shooting Billy Bob, Scooby. Scooby. Shaggy make it back into the house. Scooby starts looking for him. He sees a big lump in the curtain. He begins then, but turns out to be the skeleton. Scooby stands out. One bite. The skeleton's cake, causing him to run off. The scrap with the bit of scrap he's holding in his mouth. To rip off. Scrap. He's telling him to come back and fight. He then hears some noise coming from a piano. Begin the skeleton. Starts jumping on the cake. He's an upcoming Shaggy and Scooby. Yeah! And then they say to Scrappy, What's the big idea? Yes, Gary, what's the big idea? Like, you want to go to Gary's club? So Scrappy says, Gee, guys, I'm sorry. I thought the ghost was hanging in there. Well, he wasn't. But look what you did. You broke the key. But okay, then, then Jaggy pushes it down and then opens the door, causing Scrappy to realize what the clue meant. Yep. He was referring to that broken piano key. It was a key to open to the next room where they find the next treasure. But as they got into it, someone pulled the key and they were locked in there. Then for a moment they were frightened until they see a ghostly creature coming out with sharp teeth and everything. But then it ended up just being a silly ghost. Shrieko. Shrieko, thank you, honey. It was Shrieko. He was just having a little fun until his brother came in to slap him in the back saying, Hey, we're not here for fun. We're here to help them get rid of the ghost. So stop playing around. Or something like that. Basically, Shrieko plans the Show off his scary face, saying that it's scarier than Shrieko's. But Nico starts acting all scared, saying he can't stand it all, but Ace and Shrieko says, he's not doing it yet. That's the way his face always looks. Nico nah. says, I know. And Shrieko says, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got to there. Nah. And Shrieko goes, oh yeah, well, Bobby, you get this. He brought back Shrieko's. And then he <laughs> sends it right back on the Shrieko's face. Well, Jackie's telling him to quit going around and help him get out. Scrap. He should reveal that he's found the third diamond out of the clue. Let me See read it. See how it's one. so dark in there. Let me read it, honey, okay? Because you read it already a couple okay. times more than I So Shrieko turns, uh, turns his head into an actual light bulb, calling it a light. Alright. Look for a relative who is quite old, whose face cannot look. But who hands cannot hold. Huh. I was able to say that right, normal. Come on, honey, continue. Look for a relative who is quite old, whose face cannot look. And I already said that hold. already, honey. Sorry, I, just <laughs> I know, I know. It was then that Shrieko's head blew a fuse. Yep, blew with a boom. <laughs> Like that. But in any case, as the trio tried to help the live trio to get out of there, first Miko went to play on the piano. Dun dun dun, mum ba dum, dum ba dum, until ow! Miko smacks him in the head. Press the right key, the broken key, to free those three. And as he did, door opened and they were able to go out. Oh, there. And so they continue on with their search to find the next clue. And as you say, that the next clue. Is for this. But then Shaggy, but then Scrappy was able to figure it out the riddle. And as you look at the father clock, because the father clock is a grandfather and a relative who can't hold anything but has a face. 
Yes, because basically clocks have hands that can't hold anything. They're just pointing the numbers, and they have faces that can't see. Unless you're Cogsworth. Yeah, unless you're Cogsworth from the Disney movie. And of course, Nico trying to get away from his brother is hitting that sink. I'm going tick 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 tock. Tick 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 tock. Tick 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 tock. I love that scene. This is why I love Jayco. He's the best partner when it comes to reviewing. And he's the only one who helps me. Which I appreciate. A lot. After that, they got the jewels out of there. But unfortunately, Scrappy got the next clue. And the next clue said, let's see, as he tried to, as he tried to said, let's see, as he read the clue to them, there is no pendulum in this clock. So what does it lack besides a talk? And they asked a uh, Rick. <laughs> but then Scrappy was able to figure that's how it is. But then, but, then, but then suddenly Scrappy was captured. So Shaggy and Scooby couldn't look for him. They went to go look for him and they saw him being captured or held and captured by Farquhar. Honestly, I knew that guy was underhanded. And he says, Says, hey, give us that back, Farquaad. That's Saggy's. No, it ain't. It's mine. It's mine. Well, God gave this to me years ago. It's mine. Oh, Scrappy, cut it out. Go ahead and let it have it. Come, go ahead. So Farquaad was able to win it back. But then, but they'll get it back from them somehow. But then, but then, a Scrappy was about to go after him again for the jewels. Shaggy would ask him, what was the answer? That's a, that's a tick. It means the attic. We have to go look in the attic. Which they gone. But they were being watched by the spooky skull ghost. Which is very scary. What's in the attic? Do we get scared and by his reflection in the mirror? Shaggy's not the go freaking out again. Can't have to tell him what it was. Tell him Scooby's gotta stay cool like him. Call him Scooby a scaredy cat. And then Scooby gets an idea with a sh- Heard Shaggy toss. That no Shaggy was looking for a trunk. Scooby comes up to Shaggy. Looking like a headless on the ghost. Scaring Shaggy into the trunk. Scooby sticks his hands and head out. Owns the trunk saying, Gotcha! <laughs> he was then scrap. He reveals that he's found the necklace and the next clue. And that's when the real headless, that's when another skeleton ghost shows up. Ooh. This one without any legs or a head. Oh yeah. Very nasty folk. And as they got away from that crunk, they were able to read what's left. But what? But if there's any more info on what was the gorilla doing at this time? And those tum- two dumb gun slickers? Oh, and that would show up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In any case, after that long chasing, they were able to read the next clue. For the next clue, don't look any higher. Think what you are when you're not the buyer. And Sh- Scrappy was able to solve it. Like, it's the seller. We have to look in the seller. So they went down to deep cellar, but Shaggy and Scooby were too afraid. But hey, they were pushed in. Actually, um, just kidding about the pushing. <laughs> just make a little bungee. Before they figure out what the clue was referring to, they hear a banging noise and find that it's just Farquaad fixed the door that was knocked down during the chase with the gorilla earlier. As Farquaad pulls down the napkin to wipe his face, Scrappy took back the jewels that fell out of his pocket. Basically, they see the necklace pull out. The scrappy takes it from Farquaad while he's not looking. Yep. Shaggy figures that Farquaad is most likely the ghost they been in the attic. And Shaggy put the necklace into a shirt's pocket. And he says, I bet there are no real ghosts at all around here. And that's when the Boo Brothers is here saying one at a time. First, Rico, I resent that. Causing Shaggy to go, yep! And shriek. One comes out of the swing, saying, I resent it too! Honey? Shaggy goes, yeah! 
We gotta stop for a minute. I gotta add more pictures to it, okay? Oh. We'll be right back, guys. I gotta yeah. do some more. I gotta uh, add some pictures. Shaggy said, I bet there are no real ghosts at all around here. Frico comes out with the collar with the necklace around his nose, saying, I resent that. Shaggy goes, Yay! Frico comes out with the right sleeves, saying, I resent it too. And Shaggy goes, Yeah! And Nico comes out the bottom saying, I don't mind, and Shiggy goes, ah, get out of there! <laughs> all right, we're on, baby. That's the game, the necklace. It's back from Joey. It wasn't there a total wipeout, and then a no ghost of you staring him right in the face. And that's when the Colonel's ghost shows up, grabs the necklace, causing Shay and the dog to start right over the plate. So the Boobra is finding random police when they hide. Shriko, put in the closet to where the gorilla was. And he go up in the window for him to go outside where Billy Bob starts shooting at him again. <laughs> Eventually, Shriko opens the door to the basement and tells him to watch that first step. First step is a doozy! Hold on. And in that scene, Shriko and Shriko. For some reason, it's which voice act. It's just for that scene. The common error you also seen the 1980s Turtle series. So yeah, the Boo Brothers mentioned to chase the ghost star, and checking the dog from um, the basement, Scrubby realizes that's where the next clue is. They start looking around, and Scrubby ends up tripping on some cannonball. Said the genetic told I'm not the beacons were cannon. Scooby then comes across the storeroom to all the hams. Oh, yeah, they and, loved um, it. They were eating all the hams because they are hams. <laughs> After Scooby finishes one ham, he's about to buy one, which turns out to be a fake containing the tiara and the next clue. Your and turn. Can read the okay. And it comes in. Okay. The can came the in. Goes, was with the deck. Yep. Then Shriko puts his head out saying, Bang! <laughs> that was As not funny. Shriko's bragging about his little gag. The colonel, like, the fuse on the cannon. And just as Shriko to so as you see that face, <laughs> shaking the dog's duck can. <laughs> like this. Whoosh! Yeah, Trico would have actually gone through the wall being a ghost instead of making that big hole. The Trico shows up asking, what's going on here? Who's shooting off cannons? Scrubby says, we don't know who's shooting off cannons, but we know who's shooting off his mouth. And Scrubby goes, where? And Trico asks his brother, what's the matter with you? You're sick of someone, let me see your tongue. Trico then does, ah, then Trico, then Trico pulls down his brother's tongue and... Now, oh, come on, we got ghosts to catch. And he says, that Shriko is a one crack mind. Then Scrubby reminds him of the clue, and Shaggy reads the same. The next clue you see is large and flat. It's the kind of stone you wear as a hat. Scooby starts saying the stone hat is ridiculous. Shaggy agrees, asking, wouldn't I look cute with a big stone on my head? It's then Scrap who realizes that it's referring to a headstone, or a tombstone. And that means they had to go but to the creepy old scared cemetery. <laughs> the, same, the same one they went when they first arrived. Yep. Just as I leave, and Shaggy notices Scooby's gone, he goes, Scooby, where are you? Then you see Scooby hanging on to one of the strings saying, What are you here with the hams? He got it. Shaggy walks up, walks up to him and saying, Ham, huh? You look more like a chain to me. Come on. And you probably know that throughout this movie, with when the girl's absent, Shay is a little more serious than he usually is at times. True. Um, in any case, as they went, as they went and dragged him into the grave, we see some more shenanigans with the gorilla and Billy Bob and Mary Sue. Mary Sue, if you know what I mean. The steady maid. Yes, steady maid. And we see more of the policemen trying to... Who's out there? You know, this part, honey. Yeah, basically... 
before they start heading to the cemetery, Shaggy checks to see if Billy Bob's around. And they start sneaking off. I don't know what Billy Bob's right behind him. But Shaggy's, but Shaggy's could be starting sorting him. Starting sorting him, calling him a drip. Then Billy Bob goes in and asks him, Who are y'all calling a drip? The name. When they answer you, they realize that it's Billy Bob and start running. The sheriff shows up. And so game one, but Arthur was our pop to buy Billy Bob, who's trying to shoot Shaggy and Scooby. The sheriff tries to intervene, only to get hit by two branches and squashed by a tree. Just when, just when Billy Bob's about to let Scooby and Shaggy have yeah, it, Scrabby tricks him into shooting into a cave. Where a bear lives, who ends up chasing Billy Bob away. Yeah, what a big bear it is. Too bad he ain't Smokey the bear. <laughs> yep. They finally make it to the graveyard, and after a little running with old Donut again, they finally find the clue on top of the statue. Over the colonel's head, which is right under his stone head, like the clue said. However, the Colonel's ghost shows up, temporarily hands a hold to the brood to the squirrel that was with it. But Scrap he comes back and gets the brood to the squirrel back. And goes back to regroup with Shaggy and Scooby. And that's when Old Bonnet appears again. This time, and he ends up trapped in the pit in the cemetery. And just when the is getting to throw up the brood to the squirrel. Cool. Scrap says he'll do what? Is then the skeleton runs off. Scrap he asks Shaggy and Scooby to give him a laugh. This what's going on? Sees on side of the skeleton once he's up there. Then he goes to look for help. And that's when a gorilla shows up. Mean that the ape mean that the skeleton even remembered what happened last time. And was scrappy, or he was scared off by the ape. And Shaggy's trying to read the clue. The ape is scratching and rubbing on Scooby's head. Scooby thinking that Shaggy does the same to him. But Shaggy tells him to knock it off so we can read. Just then, the ape pulls on Scooby's ear. And Scooby finally realizes what's going on, jumps into Shaggy's arm. Yep. And that's when he pulls him up. Yep. And they say, no. At this time, the sheriff is taking a nap with his car. Well, different voices calling him on the radio. Scrappy is asking for help. Oh. Telling him that his uncle when Shaggy. They drive in the cemetery like rats. It's that Shaggy Scooby rubbed by her. Shaggy cried, Run for your life! It's King Kong! <laughs> Scrappy says, Never mind. And the sheriff just says they're all nuts. Is then the sheriff finally replies to the fellow on the radio. And the fellow asking, Where the place is ya? And the sheriff asks, Who wants to know? And the fellow on the radio says, Your boss, the mayor, that's who. Ooh, the boss. The boss wants you, boy. He's half of it. Oh, hello, Your Honor. How are you? How's the missus and the kids and your dog? And he says, Never mind the corn syrup, but I just want to. Now when are you all gonna catch that ape? The sheriff says, I'm closing in, Your Honor. Well, you better get on the job, says the, says the mayor. Or you're gonna be out of a job, yeah? In other words, Fire. get busy. Get busy. Or you'll be on the unemployment line. And the sheriff says, oh yes, sir. I'm so close to that animal, I can smell him. And that's when, just as he drives up, the ape, on the top of the roof, picks it moon screen, going, Grrr! Get himself right out. I was, I was leaving on his underwear. And the shape, and he just, so it's all of his confused face. It's what, what just happened. Meanwhile, Shaggy and the dog, and you see that the ape is gone, head back to the house. Along the way, Shaggy is talking to him, um, saying there's possibly someone behind him, unaware that Sadie May is trying to they kiss him again. Oh yeah, that And Billy Bob's trying to shoot him. And just as Shaggy's saying no one's out to get him, the skeleton's about to grab him when Billy Bob pokes behind him and it's his sister. 
Then we see this coach and takes off. Meanwhile, they're finally back at the house. So Shaggy's about to read the next clue. That's my turn, honey. Hold on. Just this last, just this next little bit. Freak. Who pops out the draw the day next to Shaggy. He asks him, what does it say? Then You're nearly Shaggy pops out of the small chair. Say, it doesn't say anything. You gotta read it. You get a little boy. He eyes sharp. Then Frigo bops him on that. And blind it like a pancake, say, now you're flat. <laughs> and Frigo then gives Shaggy the okay to read the clue. You're nearly at the end of this obstacle course, so if you go buggy, you will need a horse. When Scrabby asks where you find the horse and buggy, Shaggy's it's a stable, and there's one at the back of the house. They didn't hear the door move. Freak who goes over to it, winks at the guys, then pokes his head out the keyhole. We see Farquaad listening in, and he says, Scram, you sneak! Freak goes, Ugh! and scrams the other direction. However, unfortunately, Freak can't get his head out of the keyhole. That's he, has his brother's he has to pull him out, pull him out, pull him out, pull him out. Uh, and they end up pulling the door up the hinge. Shaggy and the dog's duck, just as the blue bars fly by and crash into the wall. Duck! Shaggy walks up to him and <laughs> opens the door saying, Oh boy, you poor brothers get failure a bad day. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. They didn't head out. I award the stables, but as they walk outside, six of the boards go. Because the number of rows go, yeah! And then back into the house. Honestly, they're ghosts. They should be the one doing the scaring. Yeah, they should be. Wake a And after the, Yes. And once they arrive at the stables, they... And then the horseman wing. And the matter Shaggy opens the door. But then Scrabby points out that the whore... This was actually... A mechanical whore. Yeah. And the right the on him was just a life-size dummy. A dummy? And so one ghost... They don't have to worry about. But are you going to be asking, who's riding this mechanical horse when we first arrived? So yeah, with that done, they start to look around. Mo well, Scrapping looks around at the bar and the stalls. Shaggy goes to check out the hill. Well, Mo Scooby starts messing around on the horse. So unintentionally reactivates it. And it's then Shaggy. He gets a sneak attack from Sadie May. Oh, yeah. He proceeds to smooch him. They then pull into a wagon which rolls out of the stables and right towards the sheriff. Luckily, oh. the sheriff avoids crashing into the car, which ends up crashing into a well, sending Shaggy and Sadie May flying into a nearby swamp. And it turned out to be the most romantic ride for Shaggy and her all this time. Honestly, those two are cute together. <laughs> So yeah, so he is up in the tree asking Shaggy to get her down in exchange for another big kiss. But Shaggy goes like, no, it's a run in the opposite direction. So he may saying, oh, oh, I wish he'd stop playing so hard to get. Mm. Like I said, this relationship is actually one-sided. That's true. So he yeah, had the sheriff was out in the car asking what's going on. Then he sees Scooby aimed towards someone in the mechanical horn. So then it's in the opposite direction. And turning Scooby to turn off. Turning to push the button when all Scooby had to do was flip this way. Yep. So that's when the horse knocks the sheriff into of the lake. The sheriff, then Scooby finally turns off the horn. So as they're looking at the sheriff, the sheriff comes out of the water. Or asking Scooby, why didn't he turn the whore? Someone he told him to. And then Shaggy starts to get suspicious. It's about the sheriff knowing how to turn the mechanical horse off. Yeah, that is suspicious, isn't it, Shaggy? And Jacob, it is very suspicious. The mayor is calling the sheriff again, asking why he's not out catching any. The sheriff then grabs the communicator, saying, because I'm too busy catching the cold. <laughs> Tight. Then he drives off. Scrap. He starts slash Shaggy. Talks to Shaggy. 
not the connection between the sheriff and the mechanical whore. Scrappy asking if Shaggy thinks that the sheriff is somewhere behind all the shenanigans, all the ghostly shenanigans they've been having lately. Seeing that he can't believe that, because the sheriff has his hands full of the eight. Just before Scrappy can say eight, the eight appear, Shaggy and Scooby say him in the opposite direction. And then Scrappy calls him a big, an overgrown jungle jerk, because he ain't the well, Scrappy. With Scrap and Scooby playing to to take a shortcut to get ahead of them. But then Scrappy starts to say he feels sorry for the ape, unaware that the big guy's right behind him, saying that he doesn't think the ape is scary at all. He just wants friends. So, He's scared. He's lonely. Yeah. Supposedly. yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. He's all alone and away from home in the middle of the night, and he's probably just to scare the dark as against Scooby are. Uh, Mm-hmm. And the and he goes, mm-hmm. And Scrappy mentions that with the sheriff chase him all this and all the spooky stuff that's been happening around here lately. He's just a big bundle on our side Shaggy and Scooby. And he goes, yeah. Then Scrappy goes, sure, the poor stiff. And start to hate, and starts thinking he ain't spin won't happen. But the egg would sound like if he ran into the skeleton. And just as Scrappy leaves, the skeleton tries to grab him. The ape and skeleton see each other and... Yeah! They're scared of each other. Exactly what it is. Jacob put it. They scared him out of bejeebers, I swear you. This movie is going yeah. really scared silly. Yeah, Scrappy. He's being Shaggy did a good imitation. It's fine when he sees they're gone. Then they're selling on the other side of it. And he's asking them how they did that. Scrap Shaggy didn't... Their mind looks good away from here. Then they head back on the far from the stable. And she, the Scrappy asks Shaggy about the sheriff. He asks about the sheriff. Well, Shaggy says he thinks the sheriff must have been the one on the headless horse. And cost no cheese, no when they first arrived. Scrap asks him, why would he want to do that? And Shaggy says, I don't know, I'm probably doing the same thing as everybody else around here. Right? But buggy. Yep. Then Scrappy realizes that it was a, that the clue was apparent to the card Shaggy was in earlier. He dives into the hay, finds a ruby, and the next clue. Oh yes, the next clue hits the skidoo. Oh yes, the next clue. Let me let me get to it. Let me get to the list. Ah, right, our next clue is let's see. Ah, sorry. To get to the bottom of things is the trick. Think. How you feel when you're not sick. And Scrappy realizes if you will, we're going into the well the cart bagged into. Although when they go into it earlier, the cart's gone. Shaggy comments on Scrappy's intelligence and asks where he learned to figure stuff out like that. And Scrappy says, Oh, look, Scooby. From Scooby? Who else? Obviously, Scrappy looked up a few tricks during his time with the gang. So yeah, we after, see. Oh, go on. After Shaggy lowers Scrappy and the well, Billy Bob shows up and starts shooting again. Oh boy, that Shaggy boy. and Scooby go back into the well, and the rope snaps, and they're trapped. Just as Billy Bob's boasting about having Shaggy right where he wants him, trapped. seeing make him behind him, ties it on his gun, walks off. Billy Bob grabs his gun and. <laughs> Uh, and Zeddy Mane goes on to Shaggy saying, Who are Shaggy, honey? I'll save you. And this is the last time we see Sadie Mane for the rest of the film. That's true, and actually. This, as Shaggy thinks to the side well, a secret door opens, revealing a secret supply cave from the Civil War. The Nasa, an alleged near tunnel opening, a pearl necklace, sent another clue. Oh, uh, yes. This clue would be, let's see what we could do. <clears throat> At the end of this tunnel, so many more pearls, but on the way, many more perils. Scrap heads into the well, well, heads into the tunnel. Scooby tries to sneak off. Shaggy asks him where he's going. Scooby says he's got to make a call. Shaggy asks what kind, and Scooby says this kind. It's Shaggy grabs him into the tunnel, and where 
the colonel's girl to the cemetery on his penny farming bike. After getting about halfway through the tunnel, they notice a hat, Shaggy Olsen, and they're back in the cemetery. It's most like clean. It's obvious that the hat, which was the same moving headstone, Scooby were during their last trip to the cemetery. And Shaggy's commenting that there are no ghosts within two miles. The hat lands on right on the front. But the colonel goes, ouch! And Shaggy says, sucks! Would you believe two feet? He then proceeds to grab him, but then runs to the tunnel. Oh, the gun sacked to the booby traps. Spikes on the walls. It's a big in the ground and a bunch of rocks falling down from the ceiling. Rain and rocks, rain and rocks, watch out! Ah! That's still all over me. <laughs> Something like that. Look at these. Shaggy and the dogs avoid the traps. They come to a wall. Thinking they're out of danger, they see behind them the ghost is driving toward someone a steamroller. Makes you wonder where he got that. Yeah. So, how can a ghost drive? How can a ghost drive? Just drives? before they get oh, squished. <laughs> and they then find themselves back in the basement. Shaggy realizes that tunnels probably have a ghost coming in and out of the house. But if I have one more Scrabby question. Scrabby then finds the second pearl necklace and the next clue. Before, before Makes I say... Makes you wonder how they missed that in the last trip to the basement. I know. Oh, so I want to say this before I say the clue. How can a ghost ride a steamroller? He's from the he's from the 19th century before steamrollers were built. Seriously. That's what I want to say. Next clue we have here. Hold on, hold on. Not yet. Okay. As they get out of the basement, they find the house full of ghosts. That's oh. what was thinking. And they are finally rid of them. The ghostly trio is actually having a humongous ghost party, and they weren't allowed to. Shaggy had to tell them not to. Whew. Yeah, basic clean. They're the family of the Boo Brothers. There's Creepo, a vampire-looking goat, dancing with his unlooking goat. Then Sleeko, a Frankenstein-looking ghost, old Creepo, an Arabian ghost called Chico. And the country goes, or Zico, and the two other goes, who's known as Hide and Zico, the big girl's uncle. Kind of remind me of Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, if it excuse the language. Yeah, no. basically his heads are going up and down, up and down. Very the people say that he's always trying to hide, always trying to find himself. Hence the name Hide and Zico. Ah, makes sense, don't you know? <laughs> so yeah. After being offered some screen dip and bone chips, Shaggy finally has enough. The rant Hicks takes the wreck it on the record. There it breaks it. It insists to the ghosts. Riot's over. Everybody, oh, you tea. And all the ghosts still, hello? Huh? And Shaggy's saying, out, out. Yep. Meaning Shaggy's fighting at him. Stop of all these ghosts. And Frigo's telling him, okay, gang, Sparrow's board, dear sister, get lost. And the other ghosts so vanish, and Shaggy's from the Boo Bros, and that goes, you and I are still like, get the road. And Nico's going, what? Well, we haven't got your ghosts yet. And Shaggy says, that's the trouble. And Scrabby comes up saying, yeah, ever since you got here, all you've been doing is mess around. All you've been doing is messing around. And Shaggy tells them to go back to where they came from. But the Boo Bros tell them they can, and reveal that they're actually orphans. Oh, that's so sad. It makes me want to cry and get a tissue. <laughs> yep, no mom, no dad, no play. So they're all gone. That's why in any of the job. So they can earn enough to get their own on the house. Shaggy feeling bad about him. Rupa rehires the boob bros. Oh, no, the catch is and ghosts. And they shape up or ship out. So yeah, they make like the military. Frigo goes, boom, boom, so they check. Like this goes, so? Wow. And Shaggy goes, it's put up on my face. Frigo then grabs those. What is it? We're saying, it's just in the wrong way, that's mine. And like, what they found the Ferg. A little bit of some baggage. Amiko and Shriko's going, oh, 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 oh. That's gotta Frigo hurt. Frigo turns his head the right way. And the rest of his body toward the wrong direction. And goes, oh my, check, 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 Then he goes up the shriek and grabs him by the behind. 
And then so I'm saying, will you come on? And Shaggy says, it takes Rio Titan to be as dumb as those guys. Then Scrappy reminds him. So the clue they found downstairs. And Shaggy reads it. Oh, yes. Here's and the next one. And this is the easiest of the clues. There's no mystery about this clue. Inside Barricade, the jewels are in plain view. Oh, wait. Did we do this clue already? Uh, no, we didn't. Okay. The jewels are in plain view. Barricade. Oops. Sorry. Scrappy didn't realize this is referring to the barricade. They passed on their way to the cemetery. Scrappy comments that it's going to be easy. With Shaggy's and yeah, real easy, providing the bear isn't around. Yeah. We have our final scene with Billy Bob. Billy Bob ends up trapped. Shaggy and Scrooge in the log. Scrappy comes to the rescue. And Josh says the theory gave. What's up? Peeks into the log just before Billy Bob shoots. Billy Bob sticks his head out. But he realizes he shot the wrong target. He grabs the gun, breaks it, tries to Oh, Billy Bob is in a log. Don't worry that he's too big to fit. Billy Bob thinking that he's too smart for me. He's not worried that he's over the edge of a cliff and ends up falling into the ticket. You're supposed to be resting. I don't know, that's what. Honey, I think, I think we should stop for the night and finish this for the next part, okay? All right, okay. folks, my boyfriend needs to rest. That's enough for tonight, y'all. Have pleasant evenings, and don't worry, go hear the next part later. Night, y'all. Okay.